I'm Donna Hanover. If you took the ice bucket challenge to fight ALS, you were helping to raise awareness of a disease where the brain can no longer tell the muscles to move. Scientists here at the Jessel Lab at Columbia University and around the country are working to find a cure. Millions of people dumped ice water over themselves recently to call attention to ALS, a myotrophic lateral sclerosis. Um, and this will help find a cure. I'm not gonna argue with science. No. <gasps> the first symptoms of ALS are often small, trouble turning the car key in the ignition or a slight slurring of words. But soon people lose the ability to walk, talk, swallow, and breathe. One such person was Jennifer Estes. My sister Jennifer was diagnosed with ALS when she was 35 years old. Uh, she was uh, living and working in the city as a theater producer. Her initial symptom was uh, weakness in her legs. Um, and she just wrote it off to, you know, New York City woman working after midnight, you know, working herself too hard. But eventually she saw a neurologist. Her doctors told her to max out her credit cards and to go see Europe if she hadn't already because she was going to die certainly from ALS. No treatment no treatments available. Jennifer and her sisters, Valerie and Meredith, founded Project ALS to drive research. Scientists know that in ALS, motor neurons in the spine lose the slender axon extensions that conduct electrical impulses that cause muscles to contract, and motor neurons in the brain are involved as well. Preeminent neuroscientist Tom Jessel led research in mice that had stunning results. We spent a long time studying the problem, a simple problem, ostensibly, of how motor neurons become motor neurons during the development of an organism. And remarkably, a postdoctoral fellow, now a faculty member at Columbia, Hinek Vichterli, found that simply applying two small molecule chemicals to embryonic stem cells converted half of those cells into motor neurons. Building on all this research, the Project ALS Lab was hailed by Time Magazine in 2008 for Scientific Breakthrough of the Year when its scientists turned skin cells from ALS patients into stem cells and then into motor neuron cells. Some people call them ALS in a dish. Various cancer, epilepsy, and diabetes drugs are currently being tested on such cells to find something that will stop the death of the motor neurons. Researcher Ayman Azim explains the importance of cells that are now motor neurons that have actually come from patients. Instead of, of crossing our fingers and hoping that we have an accurate model of the disease, we have the disease. We have that patient's cell with their mutation. It must be great for people that have ALS to be able to say, okay, use my skin cell and maybe that will help in the research. Absolutely, and we can study it. and, and that. If one day we're able to make the cells that are relevant to replace their dying neurons, uh, is it going to be a really promising avenue because this is already a cell from that person so we don't have to worry about an uh, immune rejection of this transplanted cell the same way you would have to worry about it if we were transplanting from, from another animal or from another, another human. So this is a huge development. It's a huge development, yeah. Long term, doctors are hoping to someday inject healthy stem cells that will become good motor neurons. Mice with ALS-like symptoms have recovered some ability to walk with that approach. Another avenue of research is that most ALS patients never lose the ability to control their eyes. One of the studies we've been doing recently um, focuses on the eyes and eye movements and why the eyes aren't affected in ALS. So what's different about the brain cells that control the eyes? So what Tim is working on here is he's able to watch motor neuron activity in living spinal cord and see how, well, why does a disease target certain types of motor neurons that are responsible for moving your limbs or breathing, but not other types of motor neurons that control eye movements. Researchers at Columbia, Harvard, Johns Hopkins, and other institutions are collaborating on many other urgent questions. They're studying new evidence that sometimes brain cells called astrocytes may be toxic to motor neurons and that inflammation may be involved in the death of motor neurons. There are also tests on immune system cells in the brain called microglia that appear to go rogue, harming the neurons they're supposed to protect. And sometimes there is an obvious genetic cause to ALS, so gene silencing trials are being planned as well. One of the more promising avenues in research it was the identification of a few very specific genes that when they're mutated, we know they cause what's called familial ALS. It's, it's where multiple members of a family all have the same mutation. We know the genes we want to go after, and I think there's a lot of hope that in the next five, ten years we'll be able to get greater access and, 
and fix the, the, the malfunction in the neurons that we care about. ALS is often called Lou Gehrig's disease after the Yankee baseball great who lost his career and his life to the disease. Jennifer Estes died in 2003. In the years since then, significant progress has been made on the road to finding a treatment. The disease in a dish concept may help solve other brain mysteries as well. There's no doubt that what we learn about ALS will inform our efforts to understand Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, Huntington's. The fact that you can now model certain brain diseases in a dish will clearly give um, scientists all over the place um, ideas about why diseases happen and how we might slow them down or even stop them. So the brain is opening up its secrets to determine groups of researchers. For those with ALS and other diseases that seemed intractable just a few years ago, there's now reason to anticipate a cure. I'm Donna Hanover for Science and You.